If you're just joining us, uh, you find us right in the middle of a very, very tragic story breaking in the early hours of this morning. Emergency services uh, quoted much earlier uh, saying that they were called to the scene to a building uh, just behind us here. It's called Usindi, so shelter. Uh, the building was on fire. The time at that moment was at around 1.30 two in the morning and uh, people screaming for help by the time that emergency services got to the scene already 20 people had lost their lives uh, much of them owing to uh, smoke inhalation the others uh, we understand burnt beyond recognition this is information i had uh, tried to get in fact that we got from the ceo of uh, the emergency services in the city of Johannesburg. Well, let's continue the conversation around hijacked buildings and someone who knows about this particular issue and has actually tried to tackle it in the past is Kenugunene. He's the MMC of transport in the city of Johannesburg. But at the time, uh, just to make sure that things are in context, MEC, you were the acting mayor at that particular moment and you decided that you were going to go uh, on the hunt or on some kind of evacuation mission uh, to try and win back the hijacked buildings. How many buildings would you say are hijacked in and around the city of Johannesburg? Uh, thank you very much, Chloe, for having me. Um, the mayor has asked me to do this interview. Um, yes, indeed. Um, at the heart of the social ills in the city of Johannesburg is the issue of hijacked buildings that are controlled by illegal immigrants, illegal foreigners, mostly Zimbabweans and Nigerians, Congolese, um, <clears throat> who are running these buildings. But there are also uh, some Greeks, Jews, uh, some Africaners and Indians who also own hijacked buildings and people are paying rental to them. Uh, at the time, uh, I, the, the first building I went to was Casamea. And clearly, um, I said the buildings were unsafe, they were a health hazard. There is literally dumping in the middle of the buildings. We also did uh, one building with the MMC of public safety um, uh, 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 before that one, and we found the same thing. We went to a building called Park Lane. We found the same situation where you find dumping in front of the leaves that are not working. So I went on a hunt for this building. I went to run back uh, to go and uh, responding to the cries of South Africans who live in these buildings, who are paying rental to Nigerians, who treat them with so much rudeness and arrogance. And as I responded to these buildings, I was under tremendous attack. All these buildings, I think the previous uh, audit had found that there are over 1,700 buildings around Johannesburg that are hijacked. Remember, it is not only the city of Johannesburg, it is not only Hillbro. You have got um, uh, Orange Grove, you've got uh, Randbeck, and Randbeck has got different suburbs. You have uh, uh, Uvil, you have Berea. So there's so many buildings that are being hijacked and lawlessness has been allowed to prevail. But the biggest challenge for us as the city when we try to respond to this is the law. The law of South Africa protects criminality. The laws, the property laws of South Africa protect uh, criminals who hijack buildings. Today in Terfontein, uh, in, in, in Rosettenville, you go on holiday for a week, when you come back, people are staying in your house. When you try to take them out, they call the police, they say, this person has rented the house to us, now they want to evict us. The police say, you have to go to court to evict them. So, so, so the problem, the biggest problem, to evict these criminals, because once you say a building has been hijacked, a crime has been committed. Once you say there's an illegal Im a foreigner, a crime has been committed. So the problem is the law, because the law says before you can take them out, you have to find an alternative place for them, even if they are illegal in the country. All right. So MMC, that's easy pickings for you, because this is a subject you've invested your energies in for a while. But there's a different story to be told here today.
because this building belongs to the city. It is not hijacked based on the information that we have heard. But add to that, the city leased it out to an NGO. That NGO cannot be found today. So who's to take responsibility for that? Um, if the city has leased it out to the NGO and the NGO has disappeared, uh, unfortunately I was not there when the leasing happened, um, then the NGO must take responsibility. But again, uh, Polani, and I want you to understand me very clearly, these uh, there's NGOs that are being paid on a retainer by those who hijack buildings, so that when we try to evict them, then they must take us to court on urgent interdicts not to evict the people. Uh, this building, I understand, has been reported to the city. But when EMS come and they do an assessment and they say a building is unsafe and therefore people must be evicted, then you get an NGO like Siri that then takes you to court. Then you get other NGOs that I have been told by people who stay in these buildings who are tired of paying rental to criminals, saying that some of the NGOs that are taking you to court are actually on a retainer by these syndicates of criminals. MMC, so I'm saying, MMC, MMC, this is where you and I differ. Mm -hmm. And it's said that we have to get into an argument in the middle of a tragedy. This is probably the worst tragedy South Africa has seen. 73 lives are gone. And yes, talking, apportioning blame at this time may not be appropriate, but it is important that we discuss it because, MEC, the city has not done its job. If the NGO decided to disappear, <clears throat> who from the city's side was responsible for coming to check whether services are running in this particular building. Was there water here, MEC, for example? Was there electricity? Things like that. Let's deal with those. Yeah, obviously, uh, those matters need to be investigated, and they will be investigated. The government of local unity is committed uh, to making sure that we rid the city of hijacked buildings. However, Kalani, we cannot shy away. We are not apportioning blame. I'm not apportioning any blame. I am giving you the reality of the situation. And the reality of the situation is, once EMS has declared the building as unsafe, then uh, EMS must then get JMPD to come and evict. Once JMPD comes, then Siri and others come in to interdict on, on an urgent basis. Now the city's hands are tied because there's a court matter. We have got tens and tens of court cases. Uh, I, I was trying to correct a, a, a taxi rink, a, a bus rink uh, in the city of Johannesburg, in Bramfontein. That is operating illegal. But then there was a court interdict that says JMPT must not even go into the premises. I went into those premises. So I'm saying, in as much as you as the media you want to drive the blame to the city the city when it acts and i'm talking from experience because when i acted some of the media not yourself but some of the media said i must be arrested because i am evicting people illegally so when the city acts there's an outrage when tragedy hits like today the city must take the blame i refuse to take the blame had we gotten any support had the law been amended, and we need to amend this law. In order to say what? In order to say that when a building is declared hijacked, people must be evicted from that building. But you don't it's even a... know how many buildings no. are hijacked in no, Johannesburg. No, we know. How many are there? I'm telling you, an audit in 2020 when I was here yes. said that there's over 1,700 buildings that have been hijacked. However, today we know that there's 23 buildings around here that are owned by the city. There are three buildings. Remember when, after we started this program with the MMC of Public Safety and the mayor as a GLU, Public Safety has been doing an ongoing uh, operation of going to the buildings, evicting people. Now there are three buildings that are vacant out of that program. And that is why the people who have survived here will then be evacuated to this building uh, that had that, uh, that does not have occupants. The East Metro building where people have been taken in one by one. You must understand that there are people who can afford to pay rental, but they pay to criminals. 
So we have done an audit of that and we are saying to these people, get out, let us renovate the buildings so that we can pay rental to the city and get services legally, not illegal connections. All right, MMC, I've run out of time, but I don't think that it is, it is necessarily true, but we'll have to take your word for it because you are the man in authority. If the city was genuinely doing its job, at least you'd be able to tell us how many hijackers, the so-called cartels that MEC Maile spoke about, have been arrested if genuinely you were doing your job and as opposed to PR. Condolences to, to the families uh, of those who lost their lives in this tragedy. And believe me and trust me, uh, we have done so much in the six months that we have been in power from February till now. We have done a lot and we continue to do more. Thank you very much. MMC of Transport in the city of Johannesburg, uh, Kenny Kunene, uh, talking to us there.